Hey guys, welcome to this session by IntelliPart. If you are at this video, I am sure you know the popularity of Java and JavaScript, right? Even though there is a similarity in the name, they are quite different in their working. Now, keeping that in mind, we here at IntelliPart have come up with this comparison video in between Java and JavaScript. So we'll be covering a lot of points in here. So stay tuned, guys. And of course, before we begin with the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you'll never miss any updates from us. And of course, now without further ado, let's start the session. So coming to the first point on the agenda on this Java versus JavaScript comparison video, let's take a quick introduction to understand what Java is. Well, if you're in this video, I am sure that you might already know what Java is, right? It's one of the world's most popular programming languages we've had for a while. Uh, it's an object-oriented programming language that is used by millions of developers across the globe. One very important thing about Java that I'd like to highlight is that they have this philosophy which states, write your code once and you can run it anywhere. So that's a really beautiful thing when, when we're talking about portability and when we're removing dependency of the local hardware that we using to work with a programming language. So you can write a piece of code on any hardware and of course at the end of the day it uses a virtual machine to execute uh, in a way where you know you can have it run on a PC, you can have it run on a Windows machine, you can have it run on a, uh, on a Mac. So you can have a lot of operating systems make use and work with Java even though there is no native dependency that gets uh, tied to uh, the bottom of it. And of course, there is always a very good requirement when it comes to Java developers across the globe today. Even though Python has overtaken Java to be the world's number one programming language in terms of popularity, but uh, you know, there are many, many solutions. And of course, there are many things that Java can do better than Python, right? So each of these programming languages are put for their own niche use cases. And for that reason, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of requirement that comes up for Java developers across the globe today. And coming to JavaScript, what is JavaScript? Let me tell you this, JavaScript is actually one of the most popular programming languages we have today whenever the talk is about web applications, right? So whenever we want to build mobile applications or whenever we want to build web applications, uh, the top programming language that the people will look out for is JavaScript and all of its flavors out there. So with JavaScript, you can do a lot of things in a very simple way, but yet your results can have a lot of impact on what you do. For example, you can go on to do a front-end development where you can handle all the aspects of designing, creating the user interface, uh, you know, driving a good user experience, working with the elements, styling of these elements and all of that. And of course, you can uh, be interested in working on the backend as well. Backend as in how the data moves around in the system, data ingestion, uh, you know, how the servers talk to the data access unit, it's a lot of protocols at the end of the day you can make your front end talk to the back end too and it's only just this if you have an interest towards both of these front end and back end development with javascript it is possible to uh, you know look towards full stack development as well full stack development of course uh, involves both front end and back end development simultaneously and you know there are many things that uh, javascript is extremely good at uh, the first thing you really have to talk about is how it can build dynamic web pages uh, you know you already know that today's web pages uh, load really fast they, they drive a very good user experience they work on all the devices out there and all of that right to help and add the dynamic nature javascript is key and of course uh, if you already have existing uh, features in your application and you just want to provide functionality to it you want to add meaning to what the feature does then javascript is what you'll be using and then when you're building web applications, right? So you need support structures. You need, you need what we call as a scaffolding uh, to go on to build uh, applications from scratch and work on that. For that, we'll use JavaScript or a flavor of JavaScript. And sometimes it's also called as frameworks too. So uh, there are a lot of frameworks. There's a lot of extremely popular frameworks out there. You know, for example, think about React. Uh, it's a very good JavaScript framework. It's not only just React. You have a lot of... Uh, of uh, scope in terms of JavaScript. So both Java and JavaScript are at the uh, top of its game is what I would like to say. But then with that, we really have to check out uh, you know, a couple of points that compare Java and JavaScript. So talking about mode of working, right? Java is an object-oriented programming language where uh, you know you will deal with uh, all the entities as objects. These objects will have certain functionalities to them, right? So you will have uh, you know attributes, you will have definitions that define what the object is, and the functionality defines what the objects do. This is how data is moved around and it's created, uh, modified with, and of course destroyed even when not in use uh, in the entire case of Java. 
now uh, javascript is actually very similar to java but it's not the same here because see uh, javascript involves using an object based scripting approach and not the object oriented approach that we take uh, in terms of uh, what we do with java and that is a very big difference in itself to begin with and then coming to the second point you know we have to talk about file extension all the files whenever you're working with java is going to have an extension of dot java no matter what so whatever is contained in those files if it's a java file there's a very good chance it's going to have a dot java extension of course uh, you know it's, if it's a package or if it's a, a virtual machine file you can have multiple other uh, you know extensions with this but the main extension of a java file as the name suggests is dot java and in the case of javascript the extension is .js js is short for javascript as you've seen and this is what is primarily used for creating and storing all of our data in javascript files and then coming to the third point we have to talk about compilation here is where another very big difference exists in between java and javascript in a way where java code gets interpreted and then compiled right so we have something called as bytecode uh, where the java code gets converted into bytecode and this bytecode is what gives java the independency uh, from the platforms you know uh, you know write once execute anywhere that is only possible because java code gets interpreted and compiled into bytecode and this bytecode can uh, be used on a variety of machines of our choice now with javascript it's a little different but since javascript is mainly used for web development it and in the case of javascript it is a little different because javascript is meant for web development right so it runs on all the browsers that we have out there it uses the javascript interpreters and at the end of the day the code runs effectively on uh, you know most of the popular browsers in fact i want to say all the browsers that we have today be it mozilla firefox be it google chrome internet explorer microsoft edge uh, you know all the browsers out there and then coming to the next point in comparison we have to talk about variable declaration See, Java is a strongly typed programming language in a way. So whenever we talk about strongly typed programming languages, one thing you have to understand is that variables have to be declared before usage. So you have to explicitly mention the type of variable that you're going to use. And then, of course, you have to declare it and then work with it. Now, this is what strong typing is. You know, if we're coming about weak typing, JavaScript is a weakly typed programming language in a way where you really do not have to specify the types of data that you explicitly use whenever you go on to, you know, store something in that particular data entity or data unit. In that particular case, this is another huge difference between Java and JavaScript where Java is a strongly typed language and JavaScript is a weakly typed language. And then coming to point number five, we have to talk about the production execution. So what happens with Java code is that it gets compiled on the server itself uh, using all the native uh, programming capabilities, using all the uh, you know computing hardware of that system, and then uh, you know it can be uh, used. The results can be seen on a client's machine, and of course uh, with the frameworks of today, it works both ways now. But primarily, Java is meant to execute on a server and display uh, the usage or the communication medium on the client's machine. Well, JavaScript is a little different here because uh, JavaScript, first of all, does not involve compilation because the code gets directly interpreted. And this happens on the client's system directly where uh, the client is using the browser uh, to work with it as well. So, and in that particular case, execution of data on the server by Java code differs a lot by uh, you know, the execution of JavaScript code that gets directly executed on the client's machine by being interpreted and not compiled. And then coming to point number six, we have to talk about the learning aspect of Java and JavaScript, right? So if you're in this particular video, if you're looking to learn either Java or JavaScript, I'm sure uh, you guys will have a very good understanding of what you might want. And in case if you do not, if you have a question saying, what can I learn better? What's easier? You have to understand that, uh, you know, documentation is something which is very important to learn any programming language and both Java and JavaScript do uh, come with amazing extensive amount of documentation out there. And, uh, you know, your learning should depend on your usage, right? Java is meant for stability while JavaScript is meant for speed. But then in terms of learning, it's a little difficult because I think in my opinion, it would be a little easier to get up to speed uh, with Java just for the fact that it's slightly easier to use. But then uh, due to the popularity of JavaScript, right, there's multiple, uh, uh, you know, outsourced third party documentations as well that will make sure that, you know, you guys can uh, learn new frameworks easily and find solutions to problems, which would have been difficult it was if JavaScript would not have been popular. So depending on your requirement of stability versus speed, you can pick one of Java or JavaScript. Understand that both of these are among the top 10 carriers to have in the, in the particular decade that we are in. So, uh, you know, either one should serve you good.
good uh, is it android app development that you're into is it mobile app development that you're into web development depending on those as well now coming to the seventh point i'm sure you guys are curious about the average salary of a java developer and a javascript developer right so java developers get an average salary of somewhere around hundred and five thousand dollars per annum in the usa and around eight lakhs per annum in india while javascript developers get uh, an average uh, salary which is slightly higher at $115,000 per annum of course in the USA and around 10 lakhs per annum in India. These are the average salary numbers which are very well achievable by uh, you know beginners if you are certified in Java or JavaScript and if you have the skills and uh, you know the skill set to basically solve problems. Uh, now with that coming to point number 8 uh, you know, if you are curious about the job roles of Java and JavaScript, Java development involves a lot of roles such as Java developers, core Java specialists, Java EE engineers and a lot of other roles too. In the case of JavaScript, JavaScript again uh, might open your uh, case into multiple job roles because here you have web designers, you have front-end developers, back-end developers, mobile app experts, JavaScript developers, solutions architect, uh, you know, so in my particular case, uh, if I have to pick a winner for this particular round of job roles, I think uh, due to its immense popularity and active usage, JavaScript might, it might open up your door to multiple job roles. And then coming to point number nine, we have to talk about the usage of objects in both of these languages, right? See, Java objects are one very important thing you have to remember is it's all class based. So without having a class, you really cannot create any sort of programs or work with any sort of Java objects at all. This is a very important difference. But then when you're talking about JavaScript, JavaScript objects are very different when we talk about Java objects because here it is not class based, but it is prototype based. So the hard staunch requirement that you have to have a class to make use of java objects versus not having that is okay with javascript is a very important difference that you guys should know at this point in time and then of course coming to the next point we have to talk about concurrent execution now let's say you have multiple programs or multiple uh, you know applications that you want to develop and run at the same time in that particular case java uses uh, what approach we call as the thread based approach where it will have multiple threads associated to uh, you know divide and share the computing load across execution units and then of course uh, whatever concurrency is required that is achieved through this now with javascript it's slightly different we do not use a thread based approach here so we make use of an event based approach in a way where uh, you know we can solve all of the concurrency requirements based on this so again this is a very uh, big difference that lies in between java and javascript and then coming to the last point in a comparison so we really have to talk about the nature of execution because what happens is that Java is a standalone programming language, right? So you can write code, uh, you know, no matter where you are, uh, no matter what code you write will be executed on virtual machines across a lot of computers out there. And it has its own niche use cases as we discussed in the start of this video. And JavaScript is popularly not used just by itself because it needs the basic foundation from HTML. It's going to need other web development languages and frameworks to go with it. For example, if you're writing a website, HTML is going to give you the foundation pillars of your website CSS will give you the styling and if you require some sort of functionality that is where JavaScript comes into the picture right so you, you just cannot have functionality and not have a front end to work with In that particular case JavaScript is used alongside multiple other tools frameworks and development languages now with this you will have a question saying okay so what do I pick Java or JavaScript now, as I told you, both of these are among the top careers to have. So you will be okay if you pick up either of these. But then it depends on your interests and it depends on what you want to do. For example, you can consider Java if you're looking towards uh, Android app development, if you're looking towards big data analytics, or if you want to get into uh, hardware programming, or even if you have certain interest towards uh, the backend or server side technologies, you know, like Apache, we have Glassfish and many other things. So this is where uh, if you're interested in this, you would be considering Java. Now, where would you be considering JavaScript? JavaScript, you can definitely think of if you're into front-end development, if you'd like to provide solutions via back-end development, and of course, this calls for full-stack development as well. Not only this, in a world where we're living where almost everything is mobile now, JavaScript is something which is very popular for mobile application development too, and even dynamic uh, SPAD, which you call a single-page app development, which is again a very popular thing today. So what is your requirement? Is it speed? Is it stability? 
ability uh, and what is your go to interest say that align with you so make sure to head down to the comment section and do let us know what your pick would be is it java or is it javascript and of course why so let's have a discussion about this further in the comment section we hope this comparison between java and javascript was very insightful for you all if you have any questions any comments or any feedback make sure to head down to the comment section below and do let us know we'll be more than happy to help you there on that note i wish you well and i'll see you on the next one